All right, so uh, the genius behind Inside Gadgets, a gentleman by the name of Alex, um, he's got all these crazy projects going on all the time. I love it, uh, quite frankly. Uh, one of his recent projects he actually open sourced. Uh, he's not actually releasing it on his store. Um, I guess the logistics behind the project itself are a little bit too, uh, too complicated to put on his store. Uh, quite frankly, the bill of materials for the project, it's like a dollar or something. Uh, I guess depending on how many, how, what kind of bulk purchases you're making. Uh, if you're just building one for yourself, it's probably going to be quite a bit more. But anyway, long story short, um, he made a uh, battery gauge or a battery meter for... Game Boys that have been converted over to lithium-ion batteries. I suppose, in theory, it should work on a Game Boy Advance SP, and uh, we'll test that theory at some point. Not tonight, but sometime. Uh, I actually do plan on installing it in one of my earlier Game Boy mods. This was actually my first Game Boy mod um, that also happens to have a lithium polymer conversion. So... Um, this is what it looks like if you get some boards made. Focus, you sh There we go. So I had these made up. Um, these are using the After Dark finish from Osh Park. I think it looks hella cool. But one problem, I didn't actually look at the bill of materials before ordering things. I just started ordering parts. And I don't know if you can see my problem here, but... Yeah... These are not going to fit on the boards I ordered. Uh, as it turns out, uh, ordering more AT Tiny CPUs, AVRs, whatever you want to call them, was actually more expensive than just literally remaking the board and ordering more boards. So that's what I did. This is the board that Alex, Alex will give you if you want to use the uh, QFN package. I also made these boards, which hopefully they work the same. It's not like it's a very complicated schematic uh, if you want to use the QFP package instead. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get that assembled here. There are actually two parts to this project, I guess. Uh, ooh. We only got one. That's all we need. There are two parts to this project here. There's the uh, main board that basically houses the AT Tiny and like six other components, three resistors, three capacitors. And then there is the LED board. Uh, this LED board literally, you, know, you just load up the 10 LEDs on it, shove it in the Game Boy, and that's pretty much it. You can, there's no reason why you can't combine these two. The only reason they're separate is because this one in particular is designed for designed to fit into a Game Boy Advance Classic. This board is going to straddle that screw post and it's going to go right there, but on the inside. Uh, but let's go ahead and get this assembled and uh, we'll go from there, see what happens. Hope for the best, etc, etc. So, there's no bill of materials posted on the project page, which I'll show a link to. So instead, I'm just literally going to hold my laptop up to the screen and you can pause the video if you want to get the bill of materials. But that is it. You need three point one UF capacitors, one one million ohm resistor, one ten K ohm resistor, one three hundred twenty K ohm resistor, and uh one AT Tiny forty eight VQFN twenty eight package. Um, you also need about 10 LEDs of your choice. You can use pretty much whatever the hell you want. The whole purpose of this project, I guess, is that you can do it however you want. Um, I suppose I can zoom this in so you guys can see a little bit better, too. But we're going to go ahead and solder this down. This is, this is going to be the hardest, well, probably the second hardest part of assembly. Ugh. Throwing shit everywhere. The hardest part of assembly is going to be flashing this Jesus thing. 
In my case, I'm probably going to use um, a USB ASP or USB ASP, whatever, however the hell that is. I should put this solder iron down before I ruin something. And uh, I'll flash it that way, but unfortunately I'm going to have to let you guys figure out on your own how to flash this stupid thing because I'm not very familiar and it's probably going to take me a while to figure out anyway. But yeah, there's so many different ways. You can use an Arduino, probably use an, a Raspberry Pi. If you have a specialized chip flasher, you could use that. All right. So I think that should be good. Melt that flux a little so I can see. I guess one of the uh, upsides to me fucking this up the way I did, not oh, dang it, uh, is that this variant of the AT Tiny is a little bit easier to solder by hand. The other one you need a, uh, or I suppose you don't really need, but it's probably easier if you use hot air to solder. But this one you can do either way, with no issues. Bottom pat pins are uh, hair crooked, but we can make it work. Actually, I think they're all hair crooked. I think I'm the crooked one here. Trouble getting that last pin on that side. There we go. Just like that. Gonna go over these, make sure there's no bridges. Bridge there. Clean off my iron. I'm going to walk this back and forth all day, but I'm not having a good time getting it out of here. I guess I'll break out the breed. Perfect. Or good enough at least. Alright. So now we need these are ninety percent sure my capacitors because they're unlabeled. And there aren't any markings on the chip. These are also completely optional, but they should ensure that everything works nice and smooth. So you do want them. They're also dirt cheap, and if you have any any parts whatsoever from any projects laying around, chances are pretty good you have a bag of those things. All 
right? So not the tweezers I usually use. I don't like them for this. I like the ones with the angled tip better. Okay. That is a lot of solder on those. Oh well, it's good enough. All right, next we have a one million ohm resistor. This one goes onto R2, which is this one down here. Oh, and by the way, these are 0603 pads. In my case, I'm using 0805 resistors but they're close enough. There we go. That's done. Next we have 10K resistors. Just need one. I wasn't paying attention. I almost cut that thing clean in half. Oops. That's okay, I have a shitload of them. Okay, 10K goes to R6, which is probably this one right here. Yeah. All right, just like that. And last but not least, we have a 300K resistor. Uh, the bill of materials does call for a 320K, but this should still work. Um, I think it should, and uh, I asked Alex a little bit earlier. He thinks it should work as well, so we're going to try it out. There it is. And that is our last pad right here. That is some really crusty looking solder, but that's okay. There we go. All right, all of the soldering onto this board is done except for all of the hookup wires. I still have to solder one wire for every single LED, one wire to the power switch, and then both wires to the batteries there. These six pads or uh, pin holes right there, mounting, whatever you want to call them, uh, are for programming. 
I'm not going to be soldering anything in there because, like I said, I'm just going to be using my USB ASP here. I'm just going to hold it against the uh, board there, and that should be good enough. Um, otherwise, i got to get this soldered together. Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to take a quick break, get this thing cleaned up, and uh, get it flashed. And I will uh, be back in just a second here. Alright, so I got this board nice and cleaned up, got all the flux cleaned up, got it flashed. Oh boy, was that a pain in the butt, because apparently AVR Dude doesn't support AT Tiny, whatever. I don't really want to get into it. Uh, there is a patch that you can use, and if you are using a USB ASP, make sure you're using the Lib USB Win32 driver, and not whatever the default driver that comes up in Zadig is. Um, anyway, sorry, I'll post a little bit in the description on that, but if you run into troubles, I, I can't really help you out. Let's get the second board built. This is the actual LED board. So, if I can get this stupid thing open. Oh no. I had exactly enough and I just lost two. <sighs> Shit. Okay. Well, I found one. I don't know what I'll do about that last one. Whatever, I'll burn that bridge when I come to it. So, this LED board is 10 resistors and 10 LEDs. You can do whatever the heck you want for LEDs, more or less. But for resistors, you want to use some 10K resistors. 10 of them, in fact, and I have 9 right here. And they do not all have to be facing the proper orientation. For resistors, orientation is irrelevant. There goes another one. <laughs> That's why you always buy extra. In this case, I didn't buy any parts for this project except for the AT Tinies. So I probably have some more somewhere. So that is some crusty looking soldering. I don't know what it is with the solder. There's like a few spots where it feels like there's no flux in there or rosin. All right, I'll use two of these. I'm pretty sure this solder is older than me. It's Radio Shack brand. But it's before Radio Shack was putting their own name on things. So everything was still Archer. Ooh, my tip is also really gross. I should clean that. Anyway. Uh, long story short, I found this solder in a uh, box, literally a box, full of electronic parts and shit that someone was throwing out. And, uh, well, I 
certainly wasn't going to just let someone throw out solder. That's just ridiculous. So I uh, appropriated the box. And I've been using it since. I'm not saying solder goes bad, but maybe it does, I don't know. When it works, it works great. There we go. Could be better but I think it's good enough. All right, so I'm pretty sure these are all common cathode, which I guess would oopsie doodle, support the markings on here. I'm not very familiar with Eagle's markings. Oh, that looks like 10. But uh, we'll, we'll figure it out when I get this plugged in if I get no LEDs that light up. Probably want to use this in like a clamp or something. All right, so with these LEDs, I am pretty sure, and please correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but it's like a little T-shape the bottom of the T is pointing towards the cathode. And if you flip it over, there should be a little green mark on the cathode side as well. So if I'm correct, should just be able to solder that down like that. Now, I'm gonna, before I get the other side, or before I even start any more of these, I'm gonna, do something. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to use this thing on its side. To hold that so that I can spin this LED and have it straight. Before we go any further, I'm going to try it out. So just to see if I'm right, and I might not be, I might have this backwards, or it's just not working at all. Why isn't it? on. Hmm. There we go. It's working. And that's right. I must have just had my, uh, I don't know what the hell's going on. Oh, maybe it's not up high enough. It's only at two and a half volts. Let's try. Let's 
try almost four volts. Yeah, there it goes. See? Oop. But I don't want to blow that. Okay. Let us move on. So because this is a battery meter, you could, if you wanted to, I'm going to switch to some angled pliers or tweezers. You could, if you wanted to, use like the last three red LEDs or something. But I'm just going to do all white because that's what. So glad that these are marked on the top too. That makes it so much easier. But yeah, the the marking on these LEDs really confused me for the longest time. Because you'd expect the side with all the green to be the cathode. But no, it's pointing towards the cathode. You'd think, you know, if it's pointing, why not use an arrow instead of a T? Yeah, that I don't know. Excellent, that was 10 LEDs. Oh. Of course, I'm blaming my solder for, well, I was earlier, for having inconsistent rosin inserted. could always just remedy that by using my own flux. I tend not to because of how much of a pain in the butt it is to clean up. All right. So now... I should be able to solder one wire. That should be the common ground. And then I can just test these. All right. Let's get some wire. Actually, you know what? Before I start assembling this, because I know I can't do it in the next five minutes, or at least finish it in the next five minutes, I'm going to take a quick break, uh, clean up all my soldering flux, just double check that I did this all right. I'm pretty sure I'm good, but I did hold on 
stay with the iron on one on a few of these LEDs a little bit longer than I should have. So um, yeah, I'm gonna just take a quick break. I'll be back in a jiff. All right, so we're finally in the uh, final stretch, hopefully. Um, here is the donor Game Boy. This is, uh, for those who haven't seen one in quite a while, this is what an AGS-101 mod looks like. I know I've been playing with these uh, IPS mods, so on and so forth. God, I can't even open this with one hand. There we go. But this is the uh, original mod that everyone was doing. First Game Boy that I modded. Um, I don't know. It's kind of nostalgic for me. For the record, I don't recommend doing lithium ion mods, but you know, if that's your jam, if you feel you've educated yourself on all the uh, quirks and ups and downs of lithium ion battery mods, then be my guest. But if you're looking for maximum capacity, lithium ion batteries are not the way. If you're also looking for ease of use, might I recommend some uh, chargeable nickel metal hydride batteries? Anyway, sorry, I'm just rambling. I'm kind of tired, I guess. Don't know what else to talk about while I'm pulling these screws out. I suppose I could fast forward through this, but that's no fun. That's out. I'm gonna remove this stuff before I just get it everywhere. And this thing, I believe, you can fit it in here pretty easily. Yeah. So if it's right here, the uh, wires that I have to solder to this thing can be pretty short, relatively short. I suppose it might fit nicely in the uh, actual battery compartment itself though, and then, oops, set that down. Because this, the LED module, is going to go in here. straddle that screw post. You don't even have to glue it in. It'll it'll hold itself there. I don't know where to put this thing. I'm not sure I want to keep that in there while I'm soldering though. Just because it's an older mod does not mean that it's cheap. These AGS-101 screens got super expensive. Okay. I suppose it could go right here, fit nicely. I want to put it right there. I feel like that would be the best spot for it, but I think over here is still going to be the easiest. Yeah, screw it. Let's make it work. So we need... Yes. I'm going to have to get a wire and above that diode that I have soldered in here. That shouldn't be too bad. I have my AGS modded so that you could just plug in any battery without modifying it.
because there's a diode soldered to the main board. But that makes stuff like this a little bit more difficult. That'll work. I have a feeling all this wiring is going to take me like half an hour. Because I said I was pretty much done. So of course, yeah. I might as well put up a soldering iron. Of course, my battery is unplugged. I'm working on this. Just want to get a big old solder blob on there because I don't know why there wasn't already one. All right. Same thing in there. Boom. And we need a third wire that goes after the power switch. So probably we'll solder it right there. Or actually, no. Let's get this in a different spot here. there's like a good spot we just need a uh, on sensor for the most part which should be this yeah that's off so this would be on it doesn't connect to the fuse does it no, it does so if we solder it I'm thinking on this side of the fuse we can make sure that this thing is fused as well Not sure how good of an idea that is, but we'll just roll with it. Problem is, of course, I have no idea how this is supposed to be wired. But I'm pretty sure that's it. So there's three power terminals. The battery, or for 
this board here. Two of them hook directly into the battery, and then the third one is the on signal. Because this won't work if it uh, is running through the GBA instead of through the battery, because you have to lower your voltage. Oops, doodle. Can't find the hole. Because the GBA does not work with the full battery lithium polymer battery voltage. You need to drop it down to GBA friendly levels. Okay. I'm pretty sure that should do it. So I'm going to take this, probably regret it, but we'll stick it down. That won't go anywhere. I'm going to take my LED here. Let's test this thing out. So I'm pretty sure that shouldn't be on until we turn it on. Game Boy's on. Hmm. Game Boy's not on, so that shouldn't be on. I'm not sure what I did wrong. I have to investigate. I'll be back in a moment. All right, so I actually figured out my error pretty quickly. It was, I'm actually kind of embarrassed that I did what I did. Um, this fuse is connected directly to the battery input so it's always on this line should be connected up to something that's only powered on when the Game Boy is on which in this case we're going to use get that out of the way we're going to use one of these common pins on the back of the power switch any of the middle two pins, does not matter which. On the plus side, instead of wiring up this to the positive battery terminal, you should put that on this side of the fuse or on the pin 2 of the power switch, then your uh, input will be fused there, or your battery board will be fused. Alright, now, if we plug this in, notice my LED didn't come on. If we switch this on, we hold the LED down. Okay, this isn't a very good test if I have to keep wiggling it. Okay, there, now it's working. Off. Ta da! All right, let's continue wiring this monster up. All right, for power, I'm going to use 
one blue wire for ground and then the rest are going to be red because I only have two colors. We're going to ground it through the board instead of through the Game Boy. Pretty sure we could just use this battery minus pad. Yeah, or the bottom of this capacitor here. That also works just fine. I'll use the bottom of the capacitor, it's easier. But I'm not going to solder it on just yet. Solder it to the board first. There we go. I'm having a hard time because I need to put this in it. And here again. Before I do so, let me measure out some wires though. Just using red 30 gauge Kynar wire. And. That should be one. Oh shoot, so I have this backwards. I should have wired it up the other way. Because now I have the shortest to the shortest and then the longest to the longest. In theory, you could just put that board upside down, but yeah. This is getting super tedious. I'm probably going to pause the video while I uh, measure, cut, and install all these wires here. Or I'll, I'll do the first three and then I'll pause the video while I do the rest. Literally, I'm just going to strip off both ends just a little bit. I'm going to take the iron and I'm going to not do this backwards because I'm going to hurt myself. We'll just do one at a time. Just like that. All right, I'm going to, through the magic of television, we're going to skip a few steps here. I'm going to go ahead and get these soldered real quick. I'll be right back. All right, forgive me for cutting you guys out of the action there. I was just getting tremendously bored on my end, and I figured that you guys might be as well. Uh, 
anyway, once you've got all those soldered in there, go ahead and drop that bad boy in there. It is the perfect size, so it should just uh, stay there on its own. Shouldn't have to do much to hold it down. So let's go ahead and get this uh, let's get this finished up, yeah. Ow. Uh, pro tip: Grab your soldering iron by the plastic handle, not the metal, but not the metal bits. Ask me how I know. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and tin up all these pads here. Oh no! Shit. <laughs> Didn't do a very good job. So we'll be short one LED for the time being. Five, yeah. And I had a thought while I was uh, getting these wires trimmed out. Instead of uh, wiring this up one to one, two to two, etc., etc., you could uh, kind of mix up the wiring a little so that instead of a linear gauge, so you know depletion is left to right or whatever it is, um, it starts off by depleting the leftmost gauge and then the rightmost and then leftmost, left, so on and so forth, till all you're left with is um, LEDs in the center. And then when those go out, you're completely out of battery. That one is too short, too. Shit. That's the right one, yeah. But of course, that's also something that can be changed in firmware. But... Let me fix these last two. So which one is that? That is number two. And this 
this one is number eight. So close. But that's okay. Sorry for cutting you all out on some of the action. I was just getting super bored. Pretty sure I already said this. I'm gonna roll tonight. Crusty either. Hope that was the right wire. This one here. Oh, one more. Almost forgot. Leave that programming port clear in case I need to reprogram this thing or want to, not need to. Otherwise, you could just use that bottom most, this one for ground. All right, should some of those are a little tight, but I think we'll be okay. Try it out, huh? It's just gonna work first try. Oh, that's awkward. Oh, wait, never mind. My battery might just be half dead. There you go. That's pretty sweet. Let's try my power supply at 3.8 volts. This is a recipe for disaster, isn't it? Yeah, this is not gonna, this is not gonna end well. Wanna try charging this? I'll show you what it looks like on a fully charged battery. Because I haven't used this thing in like a year and I haven't charged it either, so I don't know. Anyway, I'll be back in a moment. So, in hindsight, instead of waiting for this thing to charge, uh, I just hooked up my power supply to this thing. Um, right now it's set to about 3.1 volts, which is the lower cutoff on a lithium battery. A uh, lithium battery is pretty much dead at 3 volts and I'm pretty sure between the two protection boards in this thing, the TP4056 and then the actual PCB in the battery itself, this battery is going to stop putting out at about 3 volts. Uh, but this is also running through a diode to drop it down even further. So the Game Boy Advance itself is receiving, uh, I don't know, like 2 volts, give or take. But if we adjust this thing, bring it up to those 3.2 volts. My light turns green. 
I get one light down there. Three point eight volts, about half charge, and about half the LEDs are lit. Four point two six. I don't know. I feel like I should have a full bar there. I don't know what's going on. But if we pump it up to four point four, we got a full complement there. So how cool is that? It's probably not best thing in the world for the Game Boy Advance to do this, but, you know. I don't see it exploding just yet. Ooh. Put it too high. There we go. Like I said, GBA has an upper voltage cutoff. I said that a while ago. What's interesting is you can hear it get quieter and quieter as the voltage gets lower. So there's a fun fact. As your battery dies, your max volume gets lower. But anyway, I think this thing is really freaking cool. And even though the GBA over voltage protection has gone off, you can still play with the AT Tiny, get the voltage going. But Alex, if you're watching this, you could do firmware updates so it's just these two for lower, then these four, six, eight, all the way up to ten for full voltage. That might be pretty cool. But, oh, there's something I, I was kind of thinking about, but I forgot about until now. With the glow-in-the-dark shell, it's even cooler. Because now that spot's glowing more than anything else. Um, anyway, I don't know. I don't think I have anything else for this video. I'm still waiting for this battery to charge. And by the way, I designed it so it's removable and you can charge it separately because I've planned on making several battery packs, but I only ever made the one. But, I don't know. It fits pretty easily with a uh, rechargeable mod. And even without a rechargeable mod, you could just make these wires a little bit longer and route them along the side. But even then, you can't even see them in my clear shell with how they're routed. But my shell's also not fully transparent, just clear enough. But nonetheless, at this point, I'm just rambling. Um, I don't think I have anything else. Let me know what you guys think. I think this is a super cool mod. I'm going to design up another PCB so that instead of having um, the separate board for the AT Tiny and then the LED board in here, this thing, so instead of having the two separate boards, it's just one board so you don't have to wire them together. And we'll install that in a Game Boy Advance SP. I think that'll be pretty cool. Um, otherwise, if you all have anything else, hit me up in the comments, let me know. But uh, thanks for watching. Have a good night. Alright, so I want to try and make a quick addendum here. Uh, my battery did finish charging. But if we boot this up, you'll notice I only get six out of the ten bars here. Um, it is working as designed, don't worry. But apparently, what's going on is something that Alex had mentioned. Um, you know, I when I asked him, could I use a 300k resistor instead of a uh, 320, he said, yeah, sure. And then I went off to start making this video. He uh, later added on that I may have to adjust some of the values in the firmware to account for the 300k resistor instead of the 300k, 320k resistor. Um, so what it sounds like is going on is uh, it's comparing a known value to my actual value as far as the battery level goes, and they're off because it's expecting a different value. So it's reading properly, it's just not handling that data properly because I used the wrong resistor. Workaround is to just use the correct resistor. 
but the whole reason I used the other resistor in the first place is because I don't have the correct resistor. Okay, so what we're going to do, I already went ahead and modified and recompiled the firmware, which is easier said than done, but reflash that, I cannot, oh dear. Plug this in here. How's about that? Oh yeah! All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Um, actually, well, before I before I go, in case you're a moron like me and only have 300k resistors instead of 320k resistors, I'll go ahead and upload the firmware that I just compiled and flashed here. Uh, you can use that instead. Um, if you're like me, you probably have like a, a whole book full of resistors and shit, and 320k just isn't, wasn't a value that was in any of my resistor books. I checked both my through-hole book and my surface mount book, and there just wasn't a 320k resistor. So, I mean, if you're buying parts, just buy the correct resistor, use Alex's firmware, call it a day. But, if you've got every other part already, except for the 320k, don't, don't make like an $8 order on DigiKey or something, just for the one resistor. Just modify the firmware and use mine. Um, the only problem with that, with what I did, is that the readings may be less accurate now. Uh, such that... I mean, I, I assumed it was linear. I don't actually know if it's linear. I just looked at the start value and then looked at the end value and extrapolated from there. But I think this is going to result in my firmware being less accurate. It does, well, hmm, less accurate in the non-initial readings, but with a fully charged battery, now that it's actually showing it's fully charged. I guess less accurate isn't the correct word to use, but that, that looks so much better, man. I mean, with a fully charged battery. I guess I'll just have to leave it on and let it run down and see what happens now. Anyway, thanks for bearing with me, guys. I know this is a super long video. I got this thing compiled and ready to upload, and then I, then my battery finished charging. I started trying it out, and I realized something was wrong. Um, but I don't know. I think it's super cool. I'm pretty happy with it. Oh, and to address the concern that I know is going to come up, Alex has run some power tests on his hardware prototype that he built. The power usage itself is only a few milliamps. It's very, 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 very minimal. And since this Game Boy Advance uses an AGS-101 screen instead of one of those new IPS displays, this thing's still going to get way better battery life than any of my other Game Boys anyway. Um, so, yes, of course it does use more power because there are LEDs. But it's not, it's not that much. And it's not nearly as bright as the video is making it look. That's just... Because I have all the lights in here off except for my uh, main room light. But yeah, no, it's, it's seriously not much. Um, I'll build another one of these for an SP and we'll test the power consumption on that one because I forgot to test it on this one. But I know it's pretty minimal. Anyway, again, thanks guys for bearing with me and uh, keep being awesome.